recording. Here we go. Okay. We're playing Witcher 3. And it should go into a cutscene right off the bat. Oh, yeah, here we go. So we'll watch this. This is the intro to, to Witcher 3. I see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Magic? Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction. The trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves. Did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches. Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery. Their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The flicker of humanity long extinguished within them. <laughs> yes, their numbers have dwindled through the years. But a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day, they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds! Flogged by war! The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. Some say they herald a second conjunction. Can we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh! It's the time of madness and disdain. Cool. So I think what we can get there out of that was the the north of this country or continent that we're in is in a little bit of chaos. So any region that's in chaos and requires assistance is always vulnerable to religious zealots or cults. So I'm guessing that's what that guy was, uh, some sort of cult leader. And he's very anti-magic, anti-witcher. Um, I have played a little bit of The Witcher 3 in the past, but it's been a while and I don't even remember what the hell I did. So we're gonna do new game. Okay, what is this? Start a new game of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with any installed expansions included. Main storyline quest for Witcher 3 Wild Hunt are disabled. Oh, well, we don't want that. New game plus. To, what is that? I don't think I would have new game plus. Cause I've never beaten the game. So we'll, we'll go with the fresh start. Oh boy. Okay, just the story. 
Story and sword, you're happy to be challenged. Blood and broken bones, you're a seasoned demanding gamer. Death march, you're truly insane and loving it. Um, let's go with story and sword. I'm not the greatest Witcher player. I, I played and beaten Witcher 1 and 2, but I, I wouldn't consider myself someone who's advanced in playing that game. So we'll do story and sword. And I will definitely take tutorials. Simulate Witcher 2 save. Uh, on. Import the Witcher 2 save game. What's the difference between on and... Wait, let's do on. That's a handy trick. Got him. Ah, uh, yes, a broken twig. right out of there. No thank you. Care Morin, Witcher Key, Banks of the Gwenlek.
It wasn't meant to amuse, but to prod you to hurry. It's midday already. You promised Siri you'd train with her. Go before Vesemir bores her to death with those etchings. So, later then. Hmm. See you later. crashed well that's not good um <clears throat> well all I can think to do is load it again and hopefully it doesn't do that again uh, I can check out the settings too, make sure there's not something going up here. Graphics. I'm going to turn them down just a tad here, let's see what that does. Uh, okay. And then we should be able to skip this. Skip. Please skip this. Okay, great. There we go. Welcome to the tutorial. Welcome to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This tutorial will introduce the game's core elements. Each message will be saved in the glossary where you also find detailed information about world lore and gameplay mechanics. To, to disable tutorial messages, go to the options menu. I'll keep that in mind, thank you. Witcher Senses. Uh, okay, the minimap and objectives. The minimap in the upper right hand corner of your display shows your current location in the surrounding area. Underneath the minimap, you'll find the objectives for your active quest. And it looks like we're in Kermorn. We want to use your Witcher senses to find the key to the bedroom door. Uh, all right. This is a highlighted object. Do I have to get close to the? You're objects? running out of juice. I know. You might bring me some more once you're done training. Uh, yeah, it looks like. Oh, well, they do highlight from across the room a little bit. Kind of hard to see. Nothing but silver. Gold clashes with my complexion. You should know that. Can I talk to Yennefer? See, I thought Siri could stand to wait a little longer. It's uninstructive. Not to mention unreasonable. Uh, let's be unreasonable. You're right. I should see Siri. I should go see Siri. Let's, let's be unreasonable. I don't want to be reasonable. Aha, uh -huh. so that's the way the wind blows. Go and train with her, then come back. It'll give me a chance to put my face on. Of all the women I've known, 
You're the only one who does that before. You've known many. What's it matter? Only ever thought of you. Okay. Got any clothes that aren't black or white? Hmm. Undergarments. Jump is space. Okay, there's our key. To unlock locked doors, walk up to them and press E. Alright. Let's take a look out this window first. Shit. Mountain pass is beautiful as ever. to walk a little bit faster that's okay I guess we'll just walk around this place okay unlocked and we'll go down here oh okay old witchers fast asleep Series disappeared somewhere, of course. Guess she prefers practice to theory. Hmm. What? Time to wake up, Master. These lessons so boring they put you to sleep too? Damn it. Better taking notes on ghouls and owl ghouls. Wanted to rest my eyes a bit. <laughs> Making her slog through that brick? No wonder she took off. John of Bruges lacks flair, true, but he's reliable. Not like the hogwash they print nowadays. Hogwash. She's tackling the pendulums, right? How many times do I have to tell her? Don't train alone. It only embeds your errors. Bring our young damsel to the lower courtyard. She wants to practice. She'll get to practice. Don't get mad at her. Don't get mad at her. Why the hell not? The whippersnapper refuses to do as she's told. You like that about her? <laughs> Fine. Whippersnapper. I suppose I'm partly to blame. But this has to end. Now. Killing monsters is not something to be taken lightly. Siri must understand that if she's to become one of us. I'll see you below. Wrong. Now I see why you were so eager to practice. Strike! to do. Your reflexes are still slow. Maybe for a witcher. Think drowners or striggers will go easy on you because you haven't undergone the mutations? Though in your shoes I'd fear Vesemir more than any strigger. Disobeying his instructions? Unwise. Well, yes, but that book was horribly dull. I know, and you know that's no excuse. <sighs> I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Uh, let's do better not. Better not? Vesemir said if it does, he'll make you eat a bowl of slugs covered in salt. <laughs> you! Mm, exactly. So you'd best behave. Come on, 
We'll practice with the others down below. Shall we run the walls? Sure. Of course. Is a witcher school or an elven bathhouse? To the bottom. <laughs> okay. Maybe if you fall. Tell you about breathing through your mouth in rhythm with your steps. Siri, cut it out. I win. That was easy. Whoa. What happened to you? Anything to say for yourself, young lady? I'm very sorry, Uncle Vesemir. Young blood craves action, I understand that. But when you fight a beast, Knowledge counts as much as your silver sword. At the very least, you ought to be able to tell a ghoul from an owl ghoul. By markings, like unto the panthera tigris that in Zeracania dwells, and by the sickly paleness of its visage. Hmm. So you did read the chapter. Still, you should have asked if... But you were asleep, Uncle Vesemir. Won't weasel out of this. Could have said you did the exercise while Fezimir was asleep. There you go. We'll go to number two. So you did the reading. Why not admit it right off? Never pounce on an advantage as soon as it appears. Wait till it stands to have maximum effect. Uncle Vesemir's words. Well, you're a quick study. Quick, but mischievous. Fine, we've talked enough. Geralt, you're with me, Lambert with Eskel, Ciri with a dummy. Again? Stop groaning and grab a sword. What do you think? Should we start by reviewing the fundamentals or go right to free training? Um, yeah, I need to learn the, how to play the game, so... Should work on the basics. Even skilled masters need to hone the fundamentals, and Ciri's barely a novice. Draw your sword, Geralt! Combat witchers must be prepared to fight foes of all kinds, be they plate-clad knights, ethereal race, or bone-crushing giants. To match the strengths and exploit the weaknesses of different enemies, witchers need to use a variety of weapons and combat techniques. Core tools of their trades are their swords. One steel for fighting humans and non humans. The other silver for slaying monsters. Witchers have also mastered a simple form of combat magic. These signs are not as powerful as the spells wielded by mages, but they can be cast very quickly with simple one handed gestures, making them quite useful in the heat of combat. Witchers are also adept in basic alchemy. They can brew powerful potions, blade oils, and bombs, all of which give them a keen advantage when fighting stronger or faster foes. All right, press one to draw your steel sword. To sheet that, press C. Press Z to select or deselect a target. When you have a target selected, all of your attacks are directed towards it. You don't have to select a target during combat, but doing so can help you focus on a specific opponent. Okay, so that's gonna be Z. Quick cuts! One, two, three! Mount a fast attack against Vesemir by pressing. What the blazes are you doing? Strong strikes now. Give it all you got. Mount a strong attack by holding your left shift. Striking, young lady. Tom Fuller, enough! Tom Damn it. Position, Siri. Footwork. 
remember. To dodge one time, uh, once I indicate a direction using W, S, D, or A, and press Alt. Oh, jeez. Okay. Whoa, is a fly trapped in amber today. Do it again. This will be quick and painful. To roll out of the way of a blow, choose a direction using W, S, D, or A in space. Siri, like see how Geralt holds challenge. his sword dangles. What am I supposed to parry? If I think a stupid dummy. Pretend now, oh, live man. late. Repost! Strike! Counter Press, strike! Uh, right click just before your opponent strikes to perform a counter attack. Okay. Oh. Right, let's try that again. Just before your opponent strikes. Okay. So not after, before. Now, oh, young lady, bring the day Press to a close. We'll to go over a few quick exits. Signs. Let's start with Quen. Select the Quen sign using your mouse and press left click to make it active. And then press Q. Siri, Quen is sometimes called the Witcher's Shield. Now watch carefully to see why. The Quen sign protects you against damage and certain critical effects. Cast Igni, Geralt. I want to see sparks fly. See? If not for the Quen sign, I'd be aflame by now. Alright, Geralt. Come on! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do Ard now. See that, Siri? Ard will knock anyone or anything off balance. Destroy their rhythm. I'm too old for this shit. Time for Axie. Damn it. I hate this feeling. They can really muddle your mind. Okay, that one disorients your mind. Show her, Geralt. And you're dead. Oh, Siri, couldn't move if I wanted to. Throw a bomb. Don't worry, Siri. Quen will dampen the blow. Step back and throw a bomb. Why can I do that? Oh. I'm showing off, Geralt. Okay. For bombs, you gotta press the middle scroll button. Okay, and then you can hold it and aim where you want to throw it. So let's try that. Oop, a little too high. The tutorial is over. If you want, you can continue training with Vesemir. Stop training something sheath your sword by pressing C. Fine! Enough! Continue oh, training and will! Lost your nerve? Let me practice the parrying a little bit. Okay. Jeez. Ow. I'm getting my ass kicked. Okay. Damn it! What? I'm trying to parry. Oh, it, it tells you what they are at the bottom. Protective shield, telekinesis, or uh, telekinetic blast. Let's do that. For some reason, it's oh, it's Q. That's what it is.
and then let me turn and dodge really quick. There we go. Oops. Well, how long are you gonna make me wait? Alright, I think we're done. Let's keep going. Got him. Showed him, kid. Siri, get down here. <laughs> A little she devil. Soon as she's back, we'll set her to polishing all the swords at Care Morhen. Find that helmet. Siri? Sure to find every last blade for you. What the? Maria wrote to Vizima. May twelve seventy two. You all right? <laughs> Had a nightmare. About? It'll take forever to explain. Dawn, some way off. We've got time. I dreamt of Kermor and it's going on. Started in the guest room at Kermoran. I was relaxing in a tub, and next to me. Tris? Yennefer. Funny, isn't it? She's never been there. Seems so real in my dream, though. Was she nagging you about something? Hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. True to life, indeed. We'll find her. Then we train Siri. We will, I'm not worried about that. Does the yellow mean that that'll can, like progress the conversation? Let's do we will, I'm not worried about that. I know we will. That's not what worries me. You've seen her tracks. She's at full gallop all the time. Breakneck speed through wildlands, devastated battlefields. She's in a hurry to get somewhere. Or fleeing something. Either way, it means trouble of some sort. Be surprised if she wasn't in trouble. She's always poked her nose in beehives. Courtly intrigues here, mages conspiracies there. What do you expect? Don't know. Guess I thought once we were finally reunited, things would be calm. At least for a while. Calm? With Yennefer? <laughs> Good luck. Okay, so the white ones... The white dialogue things... Do mean it's just kind of expanding... On the conversation. Um, and it won't progress things. Okay, then we train with Siri. In the dream, I went and found Siri. Then we trained. Those were the days. Hmm. Little she devil. I've trained kids who were faster, stronger, but none had her character. Didn't end well, did it? Your dream. No. A wild hunt appeared. Attacked Siri. I couldn't move. Stood there like a stump. It was just a dream. 
Siri in my dreams might mean she's in danger. That's the problem. It was more. In the past, when Siri would appear in my dreams, something was wrong. She was in danger. We taught her how to defend herself from anything, wraiths included. Time to go. Be dawning soon. Time to go. Wait! Show me the letter from Yennefer. Might have overlooked some hint in there. Didn't overlook anything. We were meant to meet in Willoughby. That's what she wrote. Meanwhile, one army or another burned the village to the ground. All we can do is follow her trail, so... Stop talking for a minute and give me the letter. Oh, how about that? It does smell of lilac and gooseberries. You were gonna read it, not sniff it. <laughs> we must meet soon. Willoughby near Vizima. Hmm. Nothing else to guide us there. What's this postscript? I still have the unicorn? Stuffed unicorn? We used it as a bed once? What? That's private. I don't know what this means, so I'll go with that's private. That's private. Very private. Aha! I understand. At least I think I do. Maybe not entirely, but perhaps that's for the best. Back on topic. How's it look? How far behind Yennefer are we? Two or three days. Trail's fresh. But it looks like it leads towards the main road. Could be muddled there. Wait, hear that? I hear it. I smell it. Ghouls. Monsters, life on the continent and in the Skellig Isles is nasty, brutish, and short. War lays waste to the land, and those it spares live in fear of the countless monsters lurking outside every town and village. Monsters are shown with a silver health bar above their heads, indicating that you should fight them with your silver sword. Striking opponents generates adrenaline points. Certain abilities you can acquire allow you to perform special attacks that require and consume adre adrenaline points. Your adrenaline points slowly decline when you're not engaged in combat. Alright, I, I don't know if I have any skills yet that I can use those adrenaline points for. I don't know. Of course. When armies pass, necrophages follow. Let's go before any more show up. Vitality regeneration. You can regenerate vitality by eating or drinking or by meditating for at least one hour. Note, while playing on the blood and broken bones and death march difficulty levels, meditation does not regenerate vitality. Food and drink can be placed in your consumables slots for quick use during combat. Press R or F to consume them and regenerate vitality. You have some food equipped in your upper consumable slots. Press R now to eat it and regenerate a portion of your vitality. Okay. I'd rather uh, <clears throat> Crystal skull. Third skull in black crystal. Why do I think this is Yen's? It's always good to just pick up everything, so... I'll go ahead and do that. What is this? I think are down there, so we'll avoid that. Orange coins, Florence. I don't know what all of those are. 
I guess there's different types of coin. Uh, different types of currency. Ho hopefully it's all one and the same. Like we have pennies, nickels, and dimes. It'd be kind of annoying if it's not. Uh, okay, what's this? What's this say? Bandits calling themselves Temerius soldiers are hiding in the nearby woods. They have been declared outlaws and a threat to the Emperor's subjects. Assisting or sheltering them in any way will be summarily punished to the fullest extent permitted by Imperial law. On behalf of the Emperor of Nilfgaard, Captain Peter Saul Gwynleaf. Get on the roach here. Horses. Witchers spend most of their time on the road in search of their next contract. They must trek across wide valleys, climb over high mountain peaks, and trudge over th or trudge through thick bogs. Luckily, Gero can always count on his horse, Roach, to help him in his travels. To have Roach come to you, press X. <laughs> oh, okay. Gallop. Press twice, canter. Ever tell you about this sorcerer I knew? Couldn't stop talking about how useful they are as creatures. Because you can brew potions from their blood? <laughs> no, because by eating rotting corpses, they prevent epidemics. Hmm. Did he know they eat the living as well? No. Really upset him too. His theory collapsed. War is not exactly going our way. We have a side. The Northern Realms. Radovid's realms, don't you mean? Tamaria and Edern are no more. Radovid's pledged to restore the old borders as soon as he wins the war. Believe that? <laughs> Gotta believe something. It's what keeps us going. Time later. We going? Help me! Help! Has it gone? Yeah. Come out. It's a hell of a hairdo. Gods, that was close. I was sure I'd end up like my mare. Provided you got lucky. Your horse died quickly, but griffins like to toy with their prey. Eat it, alive, piece by piece. Oh. You'd... you'd like a reward, I suppose. We could use a few crowns. You don't owe us anything. Uh, you don't owe us anything. You don't owe us anything. You were in need. We helped. And they call witches heartless. Say they won't lift a finger without pay. They also say mice are born of rotting straw. Back to the trail. Like I said... Leads to the main road and ends there, muddled. You seek someone? Yeah, a woman. Yes, a woman. Medium height, long black hair. Seen anyone like that? No. But there's an inn here in White Orchard. Soul one around gets its share of travelers. Perhaps you'll learn something there? Besides, the inn keeps my cousin. Tell her Bram sent you. She'll treat you like family. Not a bad idea. Especially since that wound needs cleaning. 
Ah, beast barely grazed me. But sure, could use a good rye, nice and cool, you know, straight from a cellar. Let's go. New entry has been added to the beastry. Press backspace to open the menu and read it. I think there's actually gonna be quite a lot in the the menu once we open it and go through that, so we'll hold on that for a second. Is there anything to take here? No. <clears throat> okay. When on a roll hold left shift without steering to automatically follow its path. Slow now. Whoa. to hold down shift. So, a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest or the mountains, sure, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men, too. We need to watch ourselves in White Orchard. And we should leave as soon as we learn anything. Populated areas. You're nearing a village. Don't disturb the peace. Remember, town guards and hired watchmen won't tolerate theft and also won't look kindly on you accosting others. Local residents often erect notice boards near settlements such as villages and cities. They, uh, these are marked on your map. Examine them to learn about contracts, work for witchers, and local happenings. Come on now. Alright, here. Rude. What? Take that down before there's trouble. That is a coat of arms, the Temerian lilies. They've a right to hang there. This ain't Temeria no more, old man. It's Nilfgaard now. My arse it is. I'll not drink with Weaver Lost Freaks. Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. <clears throat> Already had the pleasure. Ran into your kinsman, Bram. Bram? How is he? Alive. Sends his regards. Master witches. Food and drink on the house. What can I get you? Alright, dialogue shops. Options marked with gold bags. We'll open the shop panel. Uh, pretty busy place. Pretty busy place you got. Nation's on the move. Some search for kin, others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest in warmth. So, war's been good for your trade? Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. There a contract on the Griffin? There a contract on that Griffin? Nay, not at the moment. Used to be. Soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the Alderman would start a collection, or go to the Lord for help. Now the Alderman don't use the privy without asking the Black One's permission first. And, 
as soon as they hanged the Lord. So no contract. Shame. We might have done something, but not for free. Show me what you got. Show me what you got behind the counter. Buy and sell items using the shop panel. Double click on an item to purchase it. Press escape to close the shop panel. Oh, okay, so that's how much gold I have. This is what she has, and then this is what I have. I think. Torch. Potions. Tawny Owl. Accelerate stamina regeneration. Woven Hour. Temporarily, temporarily lowers the required level of all items by two. Okay. Here's Chicken Lake. Crafting stuff here. This is all the stuff that I picked up when I battled those ghouls. And. Can be exchanged for crowns at the Vivaldi Bank in Novigard. In her letter. Okay. Alright, well, is there anything that I want here? I don't know. Place next to a card with the same name name to double the strength of both cards. Common item. Decoy. No idea. Uh, I played that the Gwent card game. It's actually it's pretty good. Leader. Clear any weather effects resulting from biting forest, torrential rain, or impenetrable fog cards in play. Hmm. Um, I need to take my dog out. Let me pause the recording one second. Where is it? Right there. All right. So let's get out of this. <clears throat> Right, looking for a woman. Looking for a woman. Raven haired, violet eyes, dresses in black and white, riding in from Willoughby. And, uh, strange as it sounds, lilac and gooseberries might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. I believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. Plenty of travelers about, though. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Dialogue ending conversations. Dialogue options marked X will end the conversation. Well, thanks. Thanks for everything. Help you bandage that up? Please. I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Here. Black One's been out measuring the fields. Let him measure. Better that than burning the harvest. Oh, Drommel. Drommel, you're dumber than a headless cockerel. Why are they marking out them lines, eh? Passing out their patrimony. Give it to their own. All right. Let's see what we wanted to hear. Can we talk to you? Yes. Person? What is it, Wolf? <clears throat> been on the path for half a year now. Realize it's been half a year since we hunted down that fiend in Varun? Yes. Well, that was more than a fiend. What was that bastard's name? Drugan? May the soil lie light upon him. Things used to be simpler. Monsters were bad, humans good. Now... Everything's all confused. Used to be exactly the same. You've just forgotten. Do well not to point up my age. You're near a century old yourself. See you later, Vesemir. Let's 
game's pretty much telling me, please go explore. I love the tavern we're in, by the way. Painting on the wall. The walls, I should say. It's pretty. Alright. I'm looking for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. Out of my face, freak. For your breath sours my beer. <laughs> Alright, dialogue axe options marked with that triangle thing will make use of the axe sign. This sign influences people's minds, causing them to act according to your will. To charm more stubborn individuals who would otherwise resist during a conversation, invest in the delusion ability in the character panel. Uh, well, I don't think they just want to talk, so let's try it. Red woman dressed in black and white. Seen her? Talk. Folks say the lady rode through the village a few days back. Galloping so fast she knocked Radabor into a ditch. Which way did she go? I don't know. Lots of tracks leading off the main road. Could have gone anywhere. Oi, people! The freak's taken Micah's mind! Uh-huh. And I'll take your tongue if you don't shut up. Alright. Be gone! I, uh, well, I've drunk enough. My head's spinning. Take the hooch. It's wizardry. Okay, so she's been through here and left. Once more, there are four factions. Four what? Factions, teams, suits, similar to clubs and spades, except each suit has its own face cards. There are also special cards. Wouldn't you rather play war? It's like to be near dawn before you get your game in the noggin. All right, let's talk to these what guys. What a waste of time. The earth shall revolve around the sun before you comprehend these rules. Got a minute? Why not? Aldert Gitt, Assistant Professor in Contemporary History at Oxenfurt Academy. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher, with tenure. I'm looking for a woman. Long hair, dressed in black and white. Seen anyone like that? Of course not! Unlike the populace, I know the horsewoman of war is pure poppycock. Horsewoman of war? What do you mean? Horsewoman of war? What's that about? Folks say an omen. A beautiful phantom rides the fields at night, looks as you described her, armies follow her, and all who cross her path meet with misfortune. I can vouch for the last bit. Know where they saw her? No facts interest me, not fairy tales. Why are you here? Not a place I'd ever expect to find a scholar. Take it you're fleeing the war? Quite the opposite. Chasing it. I'm headed for the front. Tired of life? I seek knowledge, which I value more than life itself. I've a thirst no dusty old tomes can quench. I wish to see the Nilfgaardian invasion with my own eyes, understand it, and record it all in my chronicle, my magnum opus. Go back to your books while you still can. Write about the war, what it's really like. I mean, why would I tell him what to do? Interesting. We need somebody to describe war, what it's really like. Not colorful banners and generals making moving speeches, but rape, violence, and thoughtless cruelty. Ah, I see you lack the polish of the academy. Rape and cruelty are details of no import to the war's course. Trinkets on the garment of conflict, one might say. <laughs> Tell that to the people whose houses burned down. Trinkets on the garments of conflict. Uh, war make it to Novigrad yet? War reached Novigrad yet? Nope, but it's only a matter of time. Nilfgaard on one bank, Redania on the other. Drooling over the city like dogs over a juicy bone. Many a ruler's choked on that bone. True. We value our liberty in Novigrad, and we know how to fight for it. Mm -hmm. The scholars especially. The sword is not the only weapon. Do not forget, architects from our academy designed the city walls. Walls no war machine has ever crumbled. 
Gotta go. So long. A moment, Witcher. You strike me as a man of the world. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite simple. Come, let's play. Okay. Options marked with cards will begin a game of Gwent. Hmm. Why not? Splendid! Here's how it's done. Yeah, let's do the tutorial. Gwent is an ancient dwarven game that simulates the clash of two armies in battle. The players are generals and the cards are their forces. I'm going to go first. Choose a card to redraw. To begin, you draw 10 cards. This will be your hand for the rest of the match. You will not draw any more cards. Use these wisely. Okay. <clears throat> unit card strength. This is a unit card. The number in the upper left corner indicates its strength. When placed on the battlefield, this value is added to the total strength of the player who placed it. Alright. This is the unit's combat row icon. This icon indicates the row on the battlefield where the card can be played. Close combat, range combat, and siege combat. Some unit cards have special abilities. This Kedwini Siege Expert's special ability is called Morale Boost, which grants plus one strength to all units in the same row. Weather cards are a type of special card. They reduce the strength of all cards of a given type on the battlefield, including your own. So, cold reduces strength of close combat. What is this? Wind? Affects long range and then rain affects siege weapons. At the start of each game, you can select up to two cards to discard and redraw. Okay, let's skip that for now and go straight to playing. Great. This is the battlefield. This is your side. That's the opponent's side. During each turn, a player may place one card on the battlefield or pass. Each deck has a leader. The leader grants you a special ability which can be used only once during a battle. Trigger the special ability at any point by pressing X. Press enter to select a card from your hand. Press enter again to place it on the battlefield. So, would it matter what I pick? Can I just pick this guy? The number on the left by your icon, it shows the current total strength of your units. The number on the right shows the total strength for that row. Both values are updated when a card is played. At the end of a round, the player with the highest total strength wins. During your turn, you can pass by holding on space. Once you pass, you cannot play any more cards during that round. Your opponent can continue playing cards until he or she passes it well. As well, you should pass when you're confident you can win with the units you already have in play or to let your opponent win and save your cards for the next round. A round ends when once both players are passed. The players then compare the total strength of your units to determine the winner. All cards on the battlefield are discarded and both players' total strength is reset to zero. How many... So this would affect that. Um, I don't know. I could, I could play this to counter it. Why don't I do that? Actually, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, what's going on? Oh, I guess I just played that. All right. He just played an archer. I'll play my archer as well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Do I just keep playing cards? I don't really know. What is this? Pick an impenetrable impen fog card from your deck and play instantly. is gonna play all our cards because he's not slowing down. Alright. Alright. done? The player who loses a round also loses a life gem. The game is over once a player has lost lo uh, both life gems. Okay. I feel like I don't really understand what I'm doing yet. Um. Okay. So I can't. Hmm. Well, it's not a game for everyone. It requires an analytical mind. If you ever find yourself in Oxenfurt and wish to play a true master, ask for Stepan. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. Can I try that one more time? I, I feel like I need to make better use of the weather cards. Yeah, let's talk to me again. Ah, you return. Try it one time. Shall I deal? Deal away. Let's play this game of yours. All right. Quint players use their own customized decks. Use this panel to manage your decks. You can build one deck for each of the four factions: Nilfgaard, North. North Northern Realms monsters in Square Tell. Use one and three to switch between, or one and three to yeah to switch between factions. Each faction features a number of unique cards that encourage a different style of play. Each faction also has a faction perk. Nilf card wins any round that ends in a draw. Northern Realms grants an extra card after every victorious round. Squaytail decides who takes the first turn of the battle. Monsters keeps a random unit card on the battle. 
battlefield after each round. Okay, you check as one leader press X to see leaders available for the currently being faction. Just enter to choose the highlighted leader card each leader and the unique ability use it to turn the tide of a battle in your favor. Leader cards that you do not own or lock, they will be available for you to use once you acquire them. All the cards you own, which can be used with this faction, are shown here. <clears throat> okay. Cards currently in this faction's deck appear here. A deck must consist of at least 22 unit cards. It can also contain up to 10 special cards. You can include more than 22 cards in your deck, but remember that doing so decreases your chances of drawing your most powerful cards. Your deck is currently two unit cards short. All right, so they want me to move these. Jessica Findabear. How do I see? Oh, pick a, pipe, a biting frost card from your deck and play it instantly. Looks like I don't have any cards for this. Okay, so this is the only deck I have. All right. Well, let's just go. Start camp. Try this again. Choose a card to redraw. Um, clear weather. Oh, okay. Plus one to all units in the row, it's getting itself. I wouldn't have anything to play against that, would I? Oh wait, no, he has the fog.
I'm just gonna go all in. I think you're kind of betting on just your cards being more powerful. I, I don't know what the strategy is in this game. What is this? Thing? Place next to a card with the same name to double the strength of both cards. I think my card just sucks, so it just feels like I don't have anything to do. Alright, well I won. An interesting round. If you desire a rematch, let me know. Do I get anything? Oh, you got a new Gwent card. If you want to examine it, open the game menu and go to the Gwent menu panel. Is that the one I just got? Just have to do it. Okay, it went over here. Why would I want this blank card that doesn't do anything? I don't think you would want that. They don't do anything. Change leaders. Alright. Inventory. Here are your currently equipped items. Here are the other items currently in your possession. Select a tab to show the items of that type. Here you'll find information about your most important character statistics. To equip an item, drag it from your bag to an appropriate slot or double click on it. This tab shows crafting components and alchemy. This tab shows quest items. This tab shows food and items for roach. This tab shows oils, potions, and bombs. And this one is for weapons and armor. You can toggle between large and small item descriptions by pressing the wheel. You can see how a given item will look on Geralt, just press X. Using the preview option, you can see how items will look when, which you cannot yet equip. To choose the order in which items will be shown, press F. Gosh, this is a lot. To see your character statistics, hold C or press C to go to the statistics panel. You have a Witcher Potion, but in order to use it, you first must equip it. Click on the Usable Items tab. All right. Drag a potion to one of the consumable slots, which is here. This. Now you can use the potion during gameplay. Press R to activate the potion in the first slot or F to activate the potion in the second slot. Okay, that was a lot. Okay, so this is like...
Wow, a lot of information. A lot of detailed stats on your character. Boy. That's a lot. <clears throat> All right. I didn't mean to go to this. Pinning formula and diagrams. If you want to see a list of components or ingredients required for a given formula or diagram when you enter the shop panel, select it and press the pin action. Pinning formula and diagrams. If you select a crafting diagram or alchemy formula and pin it, a list of the components or ingredients you need to create that and will appear in the shop panel. This makes it easier to keep track of what you still need to acquire. I feel like going in between all these, it's going to throw up... Um, Tutorials, books, uh, Cerulea. Cerulea, I actually did want to read through all this. So if you're not interested in reading, I would cut off here because I'm going to be reading for a little bit. Cerulea, Fiona, Ellen, Rhiannon. What can I possibly say about her that we call her Siri for short, that she was born in 1251, that she has ashen hair and a scar on her cheek, all true, and that's this Cerulea I know best. The one I first laid eyes upon those many years ago, the one who seemed thoroughly, well, not ordinary, but well, certainly not as extraordinary as she in fact is. For Cirilla is also a highly skilled witcher, heiress to several thrones, her last bearer of the elder blood, a powerful source endowed with exceptional magic talent and lady of time and space. Her hair color and date of birth seem rather incidental now, don't they? I could also tell you she is Geralt's adopted daughter, but that would be a gross simplification. Siri is much more. She is his destiny, his unexpected child, someone bound to the Witcher by fate's most inextricably tangled fetters. Following age-old Witcher tradition, Geralt took Siri to Kaer Morhen when she came into his care. There he, he and Vesemir taught her in the ways of the professional monster slayer. It was then that her magic talents were first revealed and they discovered she was a source. Ciri's gift proved a curse as well because of it she would one day have to hide from the entire world, even Geralt. This is Dandelion. He's the bard. I would wager anyone that you, dear reader, are a person of culture and taste and therefore already familiar with me, Dandelion, and the role I am to play in the following tale. Nevertheless, allow me to sketch a few lines by way of self-portrait. For the sake of thoroughness, in the event you have spent much of the last half century in some dark corner where the light of my star has yet to reach. Born in 1229, a talented poet and troubadour, I don't know what that is, a graduate of Oxenbert Academy, a frequent performer at royal courts, an unequaled lover, appreciated in some cases adored by ladies worldwide, a skilled negotiator, and a stirring orator. Such is the image of the bard Dandelion, as painted by his friends and promoters. This image is, of course, somewhat overwrite in its coloring. I personally prefer to think of myself as a dedicated artist enthralled to his muse, one whose work has benefited immense, uh, immeasurably from the fact that I was, am, and forever will remain a close friend and steadfast companion to the witcher Geralt. It is his fate I chronicle in these, this present work and his story, which I shall sing till the days, the end of days. <clears throat> I'm going to get a drink before I go on further. All right, this is Eskel. All witchers have a great deal in common, but with Eskel and Geralt, the similarities are particularly striking. They first met as two boys of the same age swinging wooden swords at Kaer Morhen. Then uh, they went through an ordeal together. The first round of selections, the murderous changes, the trial of the grasses and training on the gauntlet, the witcher's daunting obstacle course. They also received hidings together for more than one act of childish delinquency. When they became adults, they walked the path separately, but still reconvened at Kermor nearly every winter to wait out the cold, drink to their successes, and remember fallen comrades. Though Eskil never gained Geralt's renown, he equaled the White Wolf in experience and carried out his contracts with care and efficiency. Death had almost taken him many times during his hunts, yet in an ironic twist, the hideous scar on his face came not from a monster's claw, but from the blade of Deirdre Aid Main, his highly unpredictable, unexpected child. I don't know what that's about. Okay, Geralt. Oh boy, Geralt. 
Many cannot fathom the friendship Geralt of Rivia and I, Dandelion, have shared all these years. When we first began breaking bread together, spiteful tongues said he'd be better off cutting my throat and dumping my body in a hollow tree before I provoked someone else into doing the same to us both. Those individuals spoke out of pure jealousy for Geralt was my dearest friend, a fact which he gave ample evidence of on numerous occasions. I could say a great deal about that world-famous monster hunter, the man known in elder speech as Gwynblade, or in our younger, yet no less noble tongue, as the White Wolf. For Geralt of Rivia is a truly exceptional individual. A brief encounter might tempt one to label him a mere swinger of swords, a simple monster catcher, a rough-and-tumble practitioner of a dirty trade, but peer closer and you will soon discover he is a man of unplumbed deaths, depths, unique views, and vast world-spanning experience. On the surface, he is introverted, tight-lipped, one might even say gruff, but underneath lies an overflowing sea of goodwill, good humor, and an honest readiness to help his friends, be it with a bit of sound advice or the masterful application of his blade. Setting aside cumbersome false modesty, I can say that I know his story better than any man alive. I was with him through hard times and good, helping with wise advice, warm words, and razor wit. As a result, I am a vital part of his story, both in its earlier and present portions. It is thus my duty to continue my chronicle and for the benefit of future generations put in writing the next chapter of his deeds and exploits. All right, this is Lambert. Lambert's the youngest among the butchers of Kermorin, and perhaps the last ever trained within its walls. By the start of our tale, Lambert had proven his chops many times over, having hunted down many a mighty beast and traversed nearly all the continent's realm several times over. Yet he had also developed a reputation for arrogance and sardonic humor, and his gruff and at times excessively blunt manner could irritate even his fellow witchers of the school of the wolf. Whatever his voice vices, it went without saying that Lambert would brave the fires of any hell for his companions. Vesemir was the oldest living member of the wolf school, and most likely the oldest witcher of any school on the continent. About as long in years as the ruins of Kaer Morhen themselves, and though eternally complaining about his creaky bones, this master of the witcher trade gave no thought to a well-deserved retirement. Gray but still spry, he continued to ply the monster-hunting trade into his golden years, effectively too, as he'd seen more beasts than all of his students put together. A harsh and demanding instructor in Geralt's youth, over the years he had become something of an adoptive father and mentor to the other witchers, or always ready to help with sage advice and steady hands. In the spring of 1272, when our story begins, Vesemir had joined Geralt on his search for Yennefer, trekking with him through war-ravaged Temeria. And this is Yennefer of Vendeberg. The witcher first met the raven-haired sorceress a good 20 years back. Their friendship and the feelings between them were born of a common adventure involving a genie and a wish granted to Geralt that intertwined their fates inextricably. In the time since, uh, then their relationship had, however, been quite stormy, rich in ups and downs, crisis, crisis, and breakups. Geralt and Yennefer's love provides irrefutable proof of the thesis that opposites attract. A few years ago, Geralt and Yennefer had, after a long separation full of adventures for them both, gotten back together again. Their moment of repose was interrupted by the wild hunt, which took Yennefer captive. The Witcher set out once to save her, but lost his memory while doing so. When he finally recovered it, he immediately set off once more on his quest to find his beloved sorceresses. You can change series look in the game menu. All right. You can change your beard. Elite crossbow set. You can get the Nilfgaard and crossbow from the quartermaster at Crow's Perch Castle. Skellig crossbow from the blacksmith, a Trolley. What is all this? Oh, additional content. All right, well, I can get weapons from certain places. Do I even want to look through all this? Um... Okay, this is just how to, this is everything we learned in the tutorial. So. Uh, 
let's just get rid of it. Cantering, galloping, mounting movement. So if I forget anything, I can just come here and see everything that I need to see. Oops. Gwent. Here's the rules of Gwent. Leaders. Hmm. Okay, so losing that first round isn't necessarily a, a bad thing, is what I'm learning. Because that first time I played, I went all in on that first round, and then I had zero cards left over. Because it, it really depends on what you draw. And those weather cards are pretty key, right? Combat, press, okay, so it's right click to counterattack. Maybe I was doing that wrong when I was doing the tutorial. I don't know. That one's hard to do counterattacks in any game. I suck at it. I'm really bad at that. Okay, Z to target. To mount a special strong attack called left shift. Okay. Signs consume stamina. Strong attack. To mount a strong attack called left shift. Yeah, we. I thought we just saw that. Um. That's yeah, the same thing, I think. Climbing, we saw that. E to climb ladders. Bombs. Use the the wheel to use the bombs. Walter, buddy. You right? All right. Yeah, these are all new quests that were added to the game, so that's nice. Good to know. Entries in the bestiary provide additional information about monsters, including tips and strategies for how to best fight them. This is very useful. Oh, and it just tells you right here. Use Ard. Hybrid Oil. It tells you exactly what to use. That's this is very helpful. So I'd you know I use the oil on your sword. Grape shot bomb. Description size. What is that? I half eagle, half tomcat, just like on the Lord's crest. Except this un was carrying me dead cow instead of a scepter. Griffin attack witness. Name it now. Griffins were once only found high in the mountains where they would hunt marmots and wild goats. When humans encro encroached on their lands, however, griffins soon discovered a new source of much more plentiful and easier caught prey, cows, sheep, and shepherds. Though still wary of main roads and towns where folk with the means to hire which are likely to dwell, these half-eagle, half-wildcat creatures have gone from rarities to oft-encountered pests known throughout the northern realms. Especially hated are the subspecies known as royal griffins and arch griffins. And these are the ghouls. Necrophage oil is their weakness, I guess. I don't understand. I'm pressing the wheel, but it's not doing anything. Description size. I don't know. 
Ghouls creep and crawl at night, eating everything in sight. In a snap, they'd eat you too, chop you up for a ghoulish stew. Child's rhyme. Ghouls and graviers are hard to describe. In part, they resemble humans, yet on the whole, they are the utter negation of all that is human. Though they have arms and legs like men, they walk on all fours like dogs or badgers. Though they have eerily familiar faces, one searches them in vain for any sign of sentiment, reason, or even a spark of consciousness. They're driven by one thing, one thing only, an insatiable craving for human flesh. All right. I think that, oh, the, okay, this is the meditation screen. Choose how long you want to rest, double click on a time. Too bothered about that. This is, okay, so this is your skill tree. These are the quests that we have. All the quests you've accepted are listed here. To see more information about a quest, click on it. Lilac and gooseberries. Yennefer had contacted Geralt, finally. They had not seen each other in years, and then she'd sent him a letter smelling of lilac and gooseberries, of course, asking him to meet her in the village of Willowberry, Willoughby, about a matter of great importance she had written. So, as was his wont, when it came to all things Yennefer, the Witcher raced off at breakneck speed. Last he arrived too late. Passing armies had raised Willoughby to the ground. Yennefer was nowhere in sight. With the help of Vesemir, whom Geralt had encountered along the way, Geralt picked up her trail, which the two witchers then followed. Yen had ridden, ridden north, traversing wild lands and battlefields at great speed. She was in a hurry. Perhaps she was in trouble. Collect them all. Complete your collection of Gwent cards. In his previous adventures, Geralt had gained fame as a master dice poker player. Having mastered all challengers in this arena, he had no choice but to find another in which to garner more laurels. He thus decided to take up Gwent, and since he aimed to play at the highest levels, he felt he had to gain a complete collection of all the cards available, including some which could only be had by winning them off the best players around. Every story has to start somewhere. This one starts in the guest room at Caramor and the stronghold of the witchers in the Blue Mountains. It starts with Geralt taking a bath, disproving the theory that witchers neglect personal hygiene. But as he's bathing, he is brusquely interrupted by Yennefer. Does she ever interrupt in any other way? She reminds him that he was supposed to train with Ciri. What could our hero do but bid the sorcerer's farewell and descend into the courtyard of the fortress? Little did he know this would mark the start of a great adventure. As it turned out, all that happened at Caramor was but a dream. The kind that wakes even witchers. Screaming a cold sweat on their brow, Geralt crouched by the fire and surveyed the land, a land ravaged by war, signs of battle stretching to the horizon, but he had not chosen this campsite for its view. Yennefer's trail had brought him there. Okay. Why does it have a little explanation point on it? Weird, I don't know. Okay, and this is the world map. How far up can you go? Not that far, I guess. Can you read this? Yeah, you can. Use A and D to switch between unread books and scrolls. Once read, they are added to the books panel in the glossary. Yennefer's letter. Dear friend, forgive me for not asking about your health or how you have been these last years. Time is very short. I have important news. We must meet and soon ride to Willoughby near Vizima and don't spare the horses. While I do eagerly await our reunion, I won't be able to wait eagerly or otherwise very long. Your dear friend, Yennefer. P.S. I still have the unicorn. I don't know what that is. A Barakos Guide to Gwent. The tome you hold in your hands commissioned by the most gracious Duke de Berry shall make use of magic most arcane to display which Gwent cards are currently missing from your collection. You need but open it and repeat in your mind how about a round of Gwent and the following shall appear. Number of new cards which can still be won from players of no particular renown or skill. 
All right, so these are all the cards I'm missing. Doesn't feel like a lot of cards overall. Maybe it is, I don't know. I don't know why some of these things are keeping the exclamation point. I, I thought that means like um, you still have to read it or something, but I don't know. Oh. There you go, I guess that fixed it. Okay, uh, I think we're done with all this then. This is for crafting. Well, this is the alchemy crafting, and this is the weapon and armor crafting area, I think. this select the glossary okay okay that's where we're just at now it just feels like a different visual of the same menus that we're navigating right. okay i'm gonna have to take a break here um god that was a, a lot just I haven't done anything. I haven't gone anywhere, and I feel like I've done a lot already. A lot of reading. Um, I think the game saved automatically, so I don't have to do anything. I'll just save it just in case, though. Empty save slot. Okay, game saved, and I will pick this up again next time. All right. Very good.